Welcome back to Movies Explained, today's film is an action war from 2022 titled, Sisu. In 1944, the end of the Second World War is near. Finland and the Soviet Union have signed the Moscow Armistice, which mandates that Finland must disarm the Nazis and drive them out of Lapland. The Nazis use a military strategy known as, Scorched Earth, which aims to destroy anything that might be useful to the enemy. Deep in the wilderness of Lapland, a former Finnish commando named Korpi has made the decision to leave the war behind. Accompanied by his loyal dog and a sturdy horse, Korpi persists in panning for gold by the river, determined not to give up until he finds even the tiniest speck of gold that signifies he's on the right track. After receiving confirmation, Korpi begins digging numerous holes throughout the area, paying no attention to the planes flying above him as they head towards a war he wants no part of. Despite days of digging seemingly pointless holes, he eventually discovers a significant gold deposit, and tears of joy fill his eyes. Breaking the large deposit into a substantial amount of nuggets, Korpi carefully hides them in his tent, staying awake all night to ensure no one robs him. The following morning, Korpi gathers all the gold, placing it in a bag, and sets off on his horse, closely followed by his dog. A few hours later, he encounters a group of Nazi soldiers led by General Bruno. The soldiers possess a dangerous tank and a truck filled with kidnapped women whom a soldier named Wolf takes advantage of. Korpi continues to ride past them, exchanging a glance with Bruno but otherwise ignoring their presence. Although Wolf wants to shoot him, Bruno intervenes, knowing that Korpi is riding to his own demise. As Korpi continues down the road, he comes across the bodies left behind by the Nazis, unperturbed by the gruesome sight. Eventually, he encounters a truck carrying four more soldiers who order him off his horse. The soldiers inspect the bags and discover the gold. However, Korpi, thinking ahead, commands his dog to run away. One of the soldiers attempts to shoot the dog, but the nimble animal manages to evade the bullet. Another soldier refers to Korpi as, Grandpa, and tries to shoot him as well. Reacting swiftly, Korpi grabs his knife and fatally stabs the soldier in the head. The remaining soldiers seek revenge, engaging in a hand-to-hand -hand fight with Korpi. He skillfully wields his knife, using their bodies as shields when gunfire erupts. Using his helmet, he mercilessly beats one of the soldiers and when the last one tries to attack from behind, Korpi swiftly twists his arm and takes him out with his own gun. Bruno and the others hear the gunfire and return to the scene, only to discover the aftermath of the carnage with Korpi nowhere in sight. When Bruno inspects one of the bodies, he finds a hidden gold nugget in the soldier's pocket, prompting him to pursue Korpi. Moments later, the Nazis locate Korpi on the road, and the tank begins firing at him. Korpi urges his horse to gallop faster, barely evading every shot, but unintentionally enters a minefield. Bruno commands his men to cease fire and eagerly awaits Korpi's apparent demise, confident of an easy victory. However, the horse bears the brunt of the explosion, leaving Korpi wounded but alive. Dazed and disoriented, he bids a farewell to his horse before preparing himself for a counterattack. As the Nazis draw nearer, Korpi quickly retrieves the gold that spilled out of the bag. Observing this, Bruno halts his vehicles, allowing Korpi to collect the gold without risking their own lives. With the gold in hand, Korpi also grabs a rock before Bruno gives the order to his soldiers to open fire. Korpi hurls the rock at a mine, triggering an explosion that shrouds the area in smoke, providing effective cover. When the Nazis begin shooting, Korpi utilizes his panning plate as a makeshift shield. After a few minutes of indiscriminate gunfire, Bruno sends a young soldier to investigate Korpi, but the soldier is struck by a mine and killed in the resulting explosion. Bruno then dispatches two soldiers to flank the sides of the road, but they too unknowingly step on mines and meet their demise. When the smoke clears, the Nazis realize that Korpi has vanished. Determined to pursue him, Bruno orders two women to walk ahead as a safety precaution. Meanwhile, Bruno searches the area and discovers Korpi's dog tag. The group resumes their advance with the two captured women positioned in front of the vehicles. Using the tank's radio, Bruno contacts headquarters to gather information on Korpi, only to receive shocking news. Their superiors inform them that they should cease their pursuit and consider themselves fortunate not to be already dead. It turns out that Korpi was the most dreaded commando in Finnish history, earning a reputation as a relentless and vengeful soldier who answered to no one. Having lost his home and family to the Russians during the Winter War, Korpi became a formidable force, hunting Russian patrols alone in the wilderness. He became a solitary executioner, reportedly accumulating over 300 Russian kills. He was known as Kashiai, the Immortal. 
Despite the news, this fails to deter Bruno, who remains steadfast in his determination to locate Corpi, as he hopes the gold will buy his way out of punishment, considering the Nazis are losing the war. Meanwhile, Corpi continues his journey until he stumbles upon a charred truck containing a lifeless body. Utilizing it as cover, he positions himself behind it and tends to his wounds, extracting bullets with his knife and covering the wounds with dirt. Suddenly, his dog reappears, faithfully watching Corpi from a distance, demonstrating its unwavering obedience. After dozing off, Corpi awakens abruptly a few hours later upon hearing noise. The Nazis have arrived, accompanied by trained dogs tasked with tracking Corpi's scent. Reacting swiftly, Corpi seeks refuge beneath the burnt truck, carefully observing the Nazis as they pass by, their dogs hot on his trail. Seizing the opportune moment, he waits until the final truck approaches and stealthily positions himself beneath it, gripping onto its undercarriage. Corpi punctures the fuel tank, causing gasoline to spill and interfere with the dog's ability to track his scent effectively. The soldiers halt their pursuit to devise a new strategy, presenting an opportunity for Corpi to make an escape. Unfortunately, the dogs swiftly detect him, barking to expose his presence. Although a soldier manages to shoot Corpi in the leg, he perseveres, prompting Bruno to release the dogs to chase him down. Undeterred, Corpi fearlessly strikes a match, igniting his gas-soaked clothing and startling the dogs, causing them to retreat. The soldiers pursue Corpi, leading him to dive into a nearby lake. Bruno instructs his men to wait for Corpi to resurface for air, but his exceptional lung capacity prolongs his time underwater. Finally, when Corpi's head emerges from the water, the soldiers open fire, assuming they have successfully eliminated him. Believing they have succeeded, three soldiers embark on a boat, intending to recover the gold. However, as soon as one soldier plunges into the water, Corpi launches a surprise attack from behind, neutralizing him with his knife. Only blood appears on the surface and Bruno orders the second soldier to jump in, with blood surfacing again. The terrified third soldier hesitates, attempting to flee in the boat, which Wolf perceives as betrayal and shoots him. Seizing the opportunity, Corpi uses the fallen soldier's body as a shield, enabling him to escape while the soldiers fire aimlessly. Corpi's loyal dog appears, yearning to follow its master but hindered by the water. After hours of arduous trekking, Corpi eventually reaches the nearest town, only to be devastated by the sight of it engulfed in flames against the night sky. Overwhelmed by exhaustion, he seeks refuge within a destroyed gas station, his attempt to rest is hampered by the pain of his leg, which brings back memories of the day he lost his family. Just as he is about to fall asleep, the sound of barking jolts him awake. Emerging from his hideout, Corpi is reunited with his faithful dog, only to discover a lit dynamite stick affixed to its collar. Acting swiftly, he removes and hurls it away, yet the explosion still resonates dangerously close, sending Corpi sprawling to the ground. Subsequently, he is discovered by Bruno, Wolf, and Schutze, who bring forth a rope to bind him to a signpost. Remaining silent, Corpi garners respect as a formidable adversary, leading Schutze to remove his hat, followed by Bruno and Wolf. Prior to their departure with the bag of gold, Bruno taunts Corpi by leaving a nugget in his pocket. After the Nazis depart, Corpi remains unyielding, stepping on a nail attached to the signpost to support his body weight. He goes even further, pressing his wounded leg onto a second nail. The pain is excruciating, but it keeps him alive throughout the night, with his loyal dog faithfully by his side. Come morning, a plane lands near the gas station, causing vibrations that shake the sign and topple Corpi to the ground. Two pilots disembark, seeking fuel, and one of them discovers Corpi in his incessantly barking dog. The second pilot urges him to shoot both of them, but when hesitation sets in, Corpi strikes the man's legs, causing him to fall and fatally strike his head. The dog's persistent barking compels the first pilot to investigate, providing Corpi with an opportunity to ambush him from behind with a brick. Believing that all hope is lost, Corpi buries the nugget left by Bruno. However, the second pilot begins to move, revealing that he is still alive. Recognizing the pilot's potential usefulness due to his aircraft, Corpi reclaims the gold and devises a plan. As the horrified pilot watches on, Corpi painstakingly removes all bullets and foreign objects from his wounds, cauterizing them with fire, and securing them shut with wire before cleansing them with gasoline. Together, Corpi and the pilot depart in the plane, reluctantly leaving the faithful dog behind. Later, the Nazis encounter a crashed plane blocking the road. Wolf and Schutze cautiously approach the aircraft, discovering the deceased pilot inside. 
To their astonishment, they find Wolf's rope wrapped around the pilot's neck. Bruno sees through Corpy's trap and realizes how dangerous he is, so he has his men leave immediately. Two soldiers accompany the women in the truck, and Aino chuckles upon overhearing their conversation about the situation. She explains that they won't succeed in accomplishing what hundreds of Russians died attempting, emphasizing that Corpy isn't truly immortal but simply refuses to succumb. In Finnish, they refer to it as Sisu, a term denoting unwavering courage and unimaginable determination. With Corpy's indomitable spirit, Aino predicts the demise of all the Nazis in due time. Suddenly, one soldier slumps lifeless, and the other is yanked out of the truck, subsequently crushed beneath an approaching tank. Aino tries to grab the fallen soldier's weapon, but Corpy swiftly boards the truck and seizes it before her. Recognizing that these are prisoners, he allows Aino to keep the weapon. Climbing atop the truck, Corpy kills the driver by stabbing him through the roof, pulling the lifeless body out for Aino to assume control of the wheel. They maneuver the truck closer to the tank, enabling Corpy to leap onto it. When the people in the tank start to get suspicious, the girls use the dead body to deceive them. Subsequently, Aino drives the truck alongside another carrying the majority of the soldiers, and the girls swiftly open fire, eliminating them all while Aino kills the driver. As the truck careens off the road, the tank's occupants take notice of the danger and accelerate. Corpy remains atop the tank and hammers the door with his pickaxe until the tank slams on its brakes, sending him tumbling. Wolf emerges from the tank, determined to shoot Corpy, but he quickly climbs on top of the tank where he engages Wolf in an aggressive hand-to-hand -hand battle. After exchanging a series of brutal blows, the two fighters fall to the ground, leaving only Bruno and Schutze in the tank. Corpy lands several more blows on Wolf, but before he can deliver the final blow, two additional soldiers arrive on a motorcycle. Recognizing the legendary Corpy, they flee in fear. Seizing the opportunity, Corpy commandeers the motorcycle and pursues the tank. For a moment, Wolf believes he has escaped, but the vengeful women suddenly appear, seeking retribution. Eventually, the tank stops to rendezvous with a pilot in his functional plane, though there is only space for one person. Without hesitation, Bruno kills Schutze and flees with the pilot in the plane. Unexpectedly, Corpy arrives on the motorcycle, immediately opening fire. While he only manages to shatter the plane's windows before takeoff, he positions the motorcycle beneath it, brandishing his pickaxe. Bruno peers down, presuming they have left Corpy behind, unaware that the motorcycle is empty. Gripping the plane with his pickaxe Corpy maneuvers precariously, nearly falling off but managing to cling to a wheel, gradually making his way inside by creating a hole in the bomb room's floor using his pickaxe. Upon hearing suspicious noises, Bruno dismisses the pilot's excuse of the plane being old and investigates. Corpy lunges at Bruno as soon as he opens the door, starting a fierce brawl. Their punches and kicks are savage, with Corpy displaying superior skill, although his extensive injuries allow Bruno to overpower him. Frustrated by Corpy's refusal to yield or scream, Bruno employs a static line to strike him with greater force, questioning why Corpy won't die. When Bruno attempts a swift blow with the line's metal end, Corpy catches it with his hand and connects it to the bomb before releasing it. Bruno plummets alongside the bomb, and upon impact, the explosion engulfs them both. Corpy is exhausted and longs for a break, but the plane begins to shake violently, sending him hurtling towards the ground. It turns out the pilot died from a gunshot injury he sustained earlier. Desperate to survive, Corpy seizes the bag of gold, strapping himself tightly just before the plane crashes into a swamp, triggering yet another explosion. Meanwhile, a Finnish unit prepares for an impending attack as they spot a German tank approaching. However, to their surprise, it turns out to be Aino and the girls, with Wolf bound to the cannon. Back at the swamp, the water helped Corpy survive the crash, and he manages to climb out with the aid of his trusty pickaxe, still clutching the bag of gold. Several days later, Corpy arrives in the city of Helsinki on the Nazi bike, accompanied by his loyal dog. He boldly enters the bank, causing fear and unease among the people present. With a determined look, he empties the bag of gold onto the front desk and requests large bills, explaining that they will be easier to carry due to their lighter weight. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more videos.